Actually, guys, can you give me one minute? Can I take that call? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Mike and I are ready to do this podcast with Gerald, and he walks away. Too big, too important for talking to Mike and I. I get it. It's good to be the Gerald, I guess. But All right, sorry about that. No problem. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Squat Cobbler. This is Kelly Tool at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L on Twitter and Instagram. And with me, as always, is Mike. That's Dr. Mike Kelly. That's right. Didn't know if that was going to stick, but apparently it's going to stick. And with me is Dr. Mike. And you can find me at Official Pagan on everything, but primarily just Instagram. Now, Kelly, before we get started here, I, I know you're going to be the Sherpa tonight. You're going to lead us through tonight's proceedings. But I have something that I, I need. I have two things, really, that I need to bring up with you. Okay. So the first one is, I'm super excited you and Mel are back doing Nurture and Support. We are too. Well, as as a day one supporter, thank you for coming back. It's exciting to hear you guys. I was excited to listen to the show. Then I listened to it, and I have a major, major issue with you. Oh, do you really? I do. So here's the thing. I accept that I'm like your podcast mistress. So I, I thought you were going to change your Instagram handle to Dr. Mike, but apparently you're going to change it to <laughs> podcast mistress, but continue. Kelly's podcast mistress. So I good. accept that I'm like the mistress. I'm this dirty, fun thing you do on the side, and Mel is is your public image. But then I find out there's someone else. There is. Well, you mentioned on the show that you do another podcast. I did not know about this. Oh, yes. Yeah. But that, that I... um. I do not have a co-host for that other podcast. I, I, I have people. I have a, someone who helps me in the recording and capturing of it. They, they do not play an active role in the podcast activity itself. This is very disheartening to find out. I really don't think you'd enjoy it. <laughs> I think it's a work podcast. Yeah, it's a thing. There are on the very small, and I mentioned this on the Nurture and Support uh, show, on the very small Venn diagram intersection of people who listen to Squat Cobbler, Nurture and Support, and Kelly's work podcast. That's a group of about three, I think. They're all totally freaked out because <laughs> apparently I have a podcast voice, which I did not know. But uh, So sorry about that, Mike. I, I guess I should have told you. I'll, I will figure out a way to get you a, a scintillating episode of that to listen to, and I think you'll feel a lot better about it after you hear it. Well, I just want to know, can I be a guest on this podcast? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, though, we could argue that since you did provide the soundtrack uh, to the mannequin challenge that we did at work, Pagan was nice enough to provide that originally developed work. I guess there's an end there. Um, there's, there's certain certain see the. The editing capabilities of the work podcast are not quite like mine. They don't have like cobbler wren at the ready to, to, to drop. <laughs> It'll be the first, the first internal work podcast that starts with a cobbler wren intro. <laughs> with a disclaimer. <laughs> There's people going around the office like, what is squirrel wagon? Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be like ricocheting, uh, ricocheting through the halls as a comment. But... <laughs> I could, I could, if there's ever a possibility to be on there, I could definitely keep it clean for you, sir. Okay. I'm going to have to mull that one over <laughs> a little bit because I want to decide how long this work podcast wants to go because that could very likely be my last episode. So we'll look at it. But um, let's just say, let's let's put a pin in that one. I'll take it under consideration. I'll, I'll uh, see what we could do. It would actually be pretty fun to do, and it would, Again, for that massive group of three people that are familiar with all the stuff, they would totally freak out when they said, my guess this week is Mike Belinsky. <laughs> I, for those people alone, you need to make this happen, sir. That would be, hmm. Yeah, I'll think about it. I mean, technically, I did contribute something to your corporate environment. You did. I do actually work in finance in my other Clark Kent life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to think about this one. <laughs> Any other grievances? No, no, that was it. I was excited to hear you guys back, though. So now, is Mel's internet issues fixed? She did mention on the episode, so this isn't like... 
putting any kind of personal information out there. She mentioned on the episode she's moving. Their house is on the market, so eventually they'll move and hopefully, I mean, so I don't think it's possible unless they buy property on the North Pole that they can get into a worse uh, Wi-Fi situation than they are right now. They're And they're kind of in, you know, without getting too much into Mel's business there, they're in kind of an appealing space in between urban sprawl and some industrialization. So it's kind of a, a, an area that's being developed and it's a decent amount of property. So I think they're just looking for the right offer at this point. At some point, I think she will move and she has to move to a place with better internet. So that'll be super exciting. And it's just basically what we're going to have to do is take a shot. And there are some good nights where reception, like when we recorded the one uh, that we did uh, last week, didn't have a problem at all. Uh, we'll just have to see uh, in the future. So we're going to try and knock a couple more off. Hopefully reports of nurturing supports demise have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, and so hopefully we'll be able to um, uh, be going uh, going on a more regular basis. So we're going to hopefully get back to the whole rotate between one nurture and support, one squat cobbler. Uh, we'll just see how Mel's internet holds up. Well, I mean, obviously I love doing the show, so I don't want to, you know, do less shows, but I, I am excited to hear you guys back again. Now, and, and I don't want to, you know more about the situation than I do, and I don't want to get into any kind of Mel's personal business on the show. Is she staying in the same geographical area that you know of or like moving, moving like? I think that's been a topic of some debate, <laughs> but my my hunch is she's going to stay. She's been in Texas a long time. I don't don't see her getting out of there, but I, I think I think they're still trying to sort some of that out. I would not be surprised if she stays kind of in that vicinity, but don't know for sure. It's very exciting stuff. So as our listeners know, because we've mentioned it a couple times in here, I recently just moved. I'm still in the same city, though. I still live in Philadelphia. I thought about moving out of here, but uh, taxes are terrible in the other areas that I looked at to the degree of, of losing an additional 10% or more to the taxes at a couple of the areas that we looked at. So that, that was out of the question. So we just moved to a, a nicer for now area in Philadelphia. But when you and I were talking, if, if this is something you're comfortable talking about on the show that we already say, squirrel, I can end, so you might as well go for it. I know you were talking about moving at some point as well. Is that still something that's on your mind? You talked about taxes. Uh, I live in the state of Illinois, which when you rank the 50 states plus the District of Columbia, it is the 50th worst state to live in from a property tax standpoint. And not to get political too much, but I would say current administration within the state and the legislature of the state is probably oriented towards more taxes should help. <laughs> so I, I don't think it's we're on a good arc here in Illinois. So I remain open to a future that I'm not in Illinois. Nothing eminent, uh, but we'll we'll get a we'll get a look. Uh, the great state of Tennessee is one that uh, is on the short list right now uh, to kind of kind of go uh, take a take a look at it at some point in time still very much in the discussion phases nothing nothing for sure yet but i'm pretty much team get the hell out of illinois <laughs> at some point <laughs> those are going to make difficult t-shirts to design but i do like it they're now actually taxing you if you leave the state <laughs> so this is how, <laughs> this is now how it works it's it's insane so yeah so we and again without getting too much into personal business or anything like that. I mean, my own in this part. Um, we, I split my time between Philadelphia and New Jersey. And New Jersey was, I think, right off the bat, like 9% more in taxes. And specifically, the area where we stay when we're in New Jersey was like an additional couple percent. So I would have been in like the 12, 13% more in taxes and I'm already paying. Yeah, the, the diversity across the United States in terms of tax policies is pretty interesting, to say the least. So, yeah, we've shared all kinds of little personal tidbits with uh, the squad. I know, it's weird. We got a little bit into politics, taxes, geography. That's it's almost like I should be on a business-related podcast. Yeah, almost. Almost like that. I'll have to work on the tangent tally for today's episode, but... Um, we wanted to take a minute to share with the squaddies that Hangouts on Air from Google is no longer available as of August 1st. This is a bit of a problem for Mike and I because Hangout on Air is how we've recorded everything we've ever done, <laughs> uh, except for we did one show on Skype uh, way back when. It's super easy for us when we had the amazing and wonderful and she likes me better Nikki Builder back on uh, <laughs> that. Uh, we were able to just share a link with her. And oddly enough, she, she may have been reluctant to give Mike and I her cell phone number. I don't really understand why. But this allowed a very kind of unintrusive way to uh, have someone join us who we don't know, like Nikki, like Rebecca Kennedy, folks that are happy to talk with us, but 
wisely say, you know, I probably want to keep myself out of your phone. <laughs> and uh, so it's been a nice, nice way to do it. It was super easy. And she just fired it up right away. And it was a piece of cake. And that was one of the wonders of Hangouts on Air was you could set this up. You could set the Hangout as private. So it wasn't being broadcast live. You could pull the audio off and do your podcast. Um, we're not going to be able to do that as of August 1st anymore. So we're working through techniques to do that. One can be Skype, which both Mike and I have, and we can do that. And we and Skype's improved a lot to where you can hit record on it and do all kinds of nice things without having to do a plug-in. So that's, that's pretty cool. But it does really put a kink in the plans for a guest who's either got to have Skype as well, and, and that sometimes can be a hassle, or they, can, they can't simply call in. Or if I actually did that you can actually get a number within Skype and they can call into Skype, on that, that's a minimal fee monthly to have that, but it disables the ability to record. So um, I'm assuming it's a lot of this has to do with privacy, that that idea of someone on the phone, if you're all on Skype and you hit record, a little message comes up that says this call is being recorded. Is everybody okay with that? If you're calling in on a phone, they don't have the ability to really kind of do that same message. So we're going to have to kind of play through a number of different options to figure out how to this happen. Why don't you just uh, talk a little bit about that today and kind of run a couple scenarios by Mike. Uh, we tried really briefly before this podcast to uh, do a, a Google Hangout, uh, not on air, just a distinct Google Hangout that's going to be around. And then I have Audacity on my system and was hitting record on that. And it looks like that might work. We have to play with it. We might have to go Skype for a while. And then the other interesting thing, and I believe I recommended this at some point in time, OBS, Online Broadcasting uh, System or Services. And that's kind of a, that's a one that a lot of live podcasters use to combine a lot of things. It's also the environment that you can do a green screen with, which I'm super excited to find a way to use sometime. But in that one, you, again, you start up a Google Hangout, but then you're able to kind of bring a browser up inside the OBS streaming environment. And it basically lets you mimic what a Hangout on air. So when I run scenarios by Google Hangouts, recording it on a, on a laptop software, Skype, or kind of an OBS Google Hangout combination, do any of those sound appealing to you, Mike? Any thoughts? So first, I'm going to go off on a tangent. I know, first time ever. Shocker. I know, right? So you mentioned about certain guests not sharing their phone numbers and things like that. I've never done this. I'm sure you've never done this. I've never posted my phone number on social media. Uh, nor have I. Okay. You'd be surprised at some of the people who do, though. So at one point, and I'm not really on Facebook anymore. Like, I have a personal page. There is a pagan page. All those really exist for anymore is the couple people I know who really just use Facebook that I need to get in touch with, or like we exchange messages sometimes because it's a convenient way for us to do that through Messenger. But actual Facebook is really just reposts of my Instagram stuff anymore. There was a time though, prior to Instagram, where I was on Facebook a lot more. I switch phones every year, year and a half, something like that. And one of the times when I switched my phones, it auto-installed Facebook and Messenger and copied everyone's contacts. And at that time, I was friends with a couple of thousand people. <laughs> I've pared that down to like 100 people or something now. Um, because again, I don't use it. So I just did a mass purge like a year or so ago. No offense to anybody if you were one of the ones purged. I'm not on there. I don't use it. I didn't want to waste anyone's time, but it copied all the contacts. This was a couple of years ago. At the time, I was friends with a few thousand people. So all of a sudden, my phone was, my brand new phone had no memory left from the thousands of contacts. It incorporated pictures, phone numbers, all that kind of stuff, set up all these ringtones for different people. It was insanity, and it took me a while to get through. As I was going through it, I realized there were some people on there who are genuine, like big celebrities. I'm not going to say their names really big celebrities who I was Facebook friends with. Now, some of them weren't people that I had had any contact with whatsoever. They were just people I liked their page or whatever. But there were some other people who I was friends with, not their public page, but their personal page. These aren't necessarily people that I am friends with, but people who I had some sort of interaction with. Maybe they did something for the radio station. They sent us promo stuff. We did a tour with them. We played a festival with them, whatever it might be. But people who were really big celebrities <laughs> and apparently even if it is just on their personal pages not the band pages or artist pages or movie pages they posted their phone numbers on there and i was looking through this and these are you know cell phone numbers of people that i never had before they were you know 
like maybe a band we had done something with where I just had like a contact number for the band, but it wasn't like everybody's individual cell phone, things like that. So I decided when I was going through this, I saw a very big name on there. And I was like, there is no way this is their phone number. So I called it (laughs) and they answered. And I was like, hey, and introduced myself. And luckily they knew who I was. Not like I was some stalker who got their number, but they knew who I was, luckily, because we had, Pagan is nowhere near as big as this person. They're, they're a musician who has sold millions and millions and millions of records. But they knew who we were because of some, some like compilation stuff and some festivals and things like that. So they were aware that this tiny compared to them band actually exists. So they didn't hang up. <laughs> so I explained who I was. And then I was like, how in the f- bad word is your personal phone number on Facebook? And they're like, oh, it's my personal page. And I was like, no, 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 delete that right now right now like i shouldn't have your phone number let alone the four thousand people who are friends with your personal page Uh, did they take your advice yes they did (laughs) but it was amazing because you mentioned how you know certain people might not want us to have their phone numbers this was amazing to me this was a huge celebrity (laughs) who had a very famous musician whose personal cell phone number was on facebook Yeah, I think we'll keep rolling with this tangent a little bit longer. Of all the guests we've had on, which do you think would be the most dismayed if if they knew we had their number? Oh, that's a good one. Hmm. I got to think for a second. Did you have somebody in mind? I think Terry Ivins, who's super friendly to us, super kind and all that, but I think appreciates a certain amount of barrier (laughs) between us and her. So I I think I could see her maybe being kind of towards the top of the list, maybe again. Not, this is in no way a criticism, Terry. She's crazy awesome and a super friend of the show. But I'm, I'm kind of thinking, uh, who would who go like, really? They have my number? That's not great. She might be <laughs> I'm trying to think, did we ever have... So there were bad experiences a couple of times on shows that we've done where I knew that somebody involved was uncomfortable. But that was usually internal or something that was handled behind the scenes in some way. Was there ever a guest that you were aware of that was like visibly not comfortable with whatever went down? I mean, I think that's the, if, if, if we go across the entire canon of snark alec radio to nurture and support to squat cobbler i mean i think that's one of the very lucky things we run across is that while there may have been uncomfortable moments from time to time i don't think there was anybody on a sustained basis that was like wow this was a mistake i need to get out of here this Um, is the lowest point of my career i can't really think of one where i saw that reaction to it but we've also been super lucky that the people we've ended up connecting with have all been so open and accommodating and friendly, but I can't, I can't really recall any guest where I kind of got the read to say, yeah, this is the point where they're like, what the hell have I done? <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which, which should have been ample opportunity for. Um, but uh, I, yeah. I had one on what show it was on one of the radio thing. Um, and so I'm not going to mention their names because I don't want to call them out or anything like that, but, they were actually, I guess it kind of carried over to Snark Alec Radio, though, because they were supposed to be on Snark Alec Radio right around the time Snark Alec Radio stopped. So it didn't happen because of that. But my first interaction with that person was just for a promo spot for the radio station. Did not go well. Not at all. <laughs> it was, um, so I'm trying not to say their names because it's not, it's not an insult to them. It was just a weird standoffish kind of thing. Like Kelly said, for the most part, we've been extremely lucky. And I would say even that we've made friends with people through this, not just, you know, people that we can work with in terms of cross promotion with each other, but people that we're actually friendly with and and talk to online and things like that. There's a person who was introduced to me through a bunch of mutual friends. Uh, They work with a lot of the same people that I work with. So we had all these mutual friends who were like, hey, you guys should talk. Mike has this radio station. You can come promote your stuff on it. That person seemed super into it. Then when we got on there right before we went to record the segment, they pretty much accused me of not actually being familiar with or being a fan of their material, but only doing it because I'm friends with all the people they work with. Yeah, good way to kick things off. (laughs) right before we recorded, like seconds before. Like I was like, all right, ready to hit record. And then they said all this. I was like, okay, then record. (laughs) And then I had to do a live event with them like two days later. 
So those internet sleuths out there can probably eventually deduce who this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can if you really try hard enough, you can figure it out. Because I believe we announced so it'll be like a little scavenger hunt. We did announce that they were going to be on Star Gallup Radio. They never were. There's pictures of me and that person on stage together, <laughs> and they were on the radio station. So you can you can put all that together and figure it out. That is your internet uh, scavenger hunt task for us for uh, from squat cobbler our gift to you but we recorded that on skype <laughs> yeah, yeah I, so. do, I do a lot of skype so other than <clears throat> like kelly said we you know we'd always for the most part utilize google hangouts 90 percent of the non-snark alec related radio stuff was done through skype yeah and that may be when it's this kind of thing like when it's you and i doing it uh that that may be it and we may have to confine the more esoteric solutions to some other combination of things. But I'm hopeful that Google at least, you know, they're, they have the webcam feature, which works great if you're a single person talking to a camera. Uh, and that's a great way that you can do all the things you can do with a Google Hangout on air with that. Uh, but if you're like we, you know, all of our shows is two, tip at a minimum, two people talking. Uh, you don't have you don't have the guest option on on the the, the go live webcam within that. I'm not because I'm not a big Facebook guy either. I know there's Facebook Live, but I think it is indeed Facebook Live, and you don't have that option to do what we do here, which is record the stuff uh, privately, yeah, so clean it up. In and my it. experience with Facebook Live, and I've only done a couple of live things with that. And it was mostly with our friend Carl Kavorkian, uh, a show that we done this weird show that was at a batting cage. <laughs> um there was there was this performance that he did at a batting cage and i joined him and that was was facebook live and then a couple of star Alec related things we did quick things with but my experience with it and you you may even know more than i do with it um was just it broadcast live and then there is a recording of it afterwards that you could do something with but that's it i'm going to dig a little bit deeper and see what uh uh, what our options are, but it is, you know, mostly for when it's just Mike and I, we can go Skype and record there. We've done that before. It's no big deal, but it's, you know, the coolest things like I'm still so appreciative to Gerald Webb and Nikki Bilderbeck for, uh, you know, the, the live tweet thing um, was, was great for stage killer. Nikki was awesome during the live tweet and that personality. I mean, she was such, such an amazing, cool, fun guest. Uh, and you just want to, that was a nice thing about the Google Hangouts on Air platform is that you could say, hey, you want to join us? And it was like low friction to have the person get in. And now it's just it's going to be a little bit more work. Yeah, but I, I, I think we'll figure it all out. I'm oh, also yeah. interested in learning more about Twitch. I know a lot of people use that. I'm just not that familiar with the platform. Yeah, I, definitely another territory uh, to explore a little a little bit further. And again, I'm just I'm not I'm not familiar with it enough to know. OK, the big thing we need is to be able to have you and I. Uh, there and able to have the conversation to be able to pull other folks in. So another one we'll look at. So any of the squaddies out there listening who might be doing podcasting or have more familiarity with these environments than maybe Mike or I do, if you have any tips for us on paths to follow, we're all ears <laughs> because uh, we're going to have to deal with how do we wrestle with this. Uh, for what we do, it's, it could be a bit of a problem. Although I think jumping to Skype is probably the simple and easiest answer. Uh, I mean, that. it seems like the most straightforward, but I'm still open to exploring whatever options are in front of us. I know there's a lot of snark Alex out there who are creating things, creating content like we are. So if you guys know something we don't know, please share that with us. In your wisdom, <laughs> let that wash on to us. Yep. Yeah, and, and that's really the point of this show is Mike and I didn't have much to share, but we need help. <laughs> and so, so we're putting a plea out to, to all listeners to say, hey, how are you dealing with this? What ideas do you have? Do some very good thinking, allow us to steal it and use it and possibly take credit for it. I mean, definitely take credit for it. Yep. In fact, we'll probably even take credit for creating the things you create. Yes, I think we will, because I, I think we inspire a lot of people in our, in our infinite wisdom. It's true. We're, we are an inspiration. We are chicken soup for the snark Alex soul. I, I, that, you hear that all the time. I do. Well, on that note, Dr. Mike. Wait, we forgot something. Uh, don't worry, it's not. Squirrel. Wagon. We already got that out of the way. We didn't tell people to like and subscribe. Oh, that's right. That, that would have been good. Hey, if you've made it this far <laughs> on this plea for help, uh, if you get a chance... We'd love if you'd go to the blog where we've got all the nurture and support and Squat Cobbler podcast at and then connect up with that. 
But even better, right now we put all of that content on my YouTube channel. And if you can make your way to that, go to youtube.com slash K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L and subscribe to that YouTube channel. You'll get all, uh, access to all of our content uh, from there. And it's a great way for us to connect with folks and also get kind of get some tracking on what's what's going well, uh, what, what's the kind of content that people like. So it was a bit of a misstep on on, on my part is that I think the, the Nikki show got a lot of viewership. But uh, most of the links that she shared were links actually to the blog versus the YouTube video. So we got the majority of the traffic there versus on YouTube, which is cool. I mean, people listening to it is the main thing. But YouTube has just been a great way for us to get a sense of, of uh, for the content we create, what people like the most. Uh, and then we always get the very interesting YouTube comments as well. We still I don't know how many episodes we need to do before we get it right. Get that subscription at the beginning. Thanks for at least catching it before we were done. <laughs> but I think on that note, we're we're 100. It's going to be smooth sailing. Yeah, it's yeah. We're about to hit our stride. I feel it. Totally feel it. But I think on that note, we're going to call it call it a day for this week. And we really appreciate you folks listening. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel. That would be great. And I just like say thanks. Thanks everybody.